G'day, I'm Josh, and today I'm going to be running you through the simple pre-start checks that need to be made on the Jimmy 1250 Evo. Before starting work for the day, uh, as with any elevated work platform, we're going to check our maintenance history and we're going to check for any reported faults from a previous uh, job. Once we're all happy with that, we can conduct our visual checks of the machine. We start from the ground level up. Uh, we check for any evidence of any obvious leaks uh, that would be under the machine uh, from parked overnight. Noting that it's all dry, we come up a bit. While we're here, we check our track tension. Track tension is very important during, throughout the day for when turning. If the tracks are too loose, they may want to try and unroll off the track chassis. Uh, we're going to check our e-stops are functioning at the upper controller as well. Obviously in an emergency we need them to function correctly. We're going to check our hydraulic oil level and we're going to check our diesel fuel level is ready for the day. Once we've confirmed that they're at the correct levels, we keep going around. We're looking for any evidence of structural damage or evidence that something may require further investigation. Any cracks in any uh, structures, any cracked paint, any rust showing through that sort of thing. We're checking all our undercarriage area for our hoses and electrical harnesses. No obvious signs of wear and tear that need to be addressed. Opening our engine compartment with the engine switched off, we're able to check our fluid levels, being our coolant, our oil, our fuel filter, and our belt tension. Moving further around, we're going to have a visual inspection from the opposite side that our basket structure is still locked correctly. There is an electrical limit switch, but it is a good idea to visually uh, inspect that the lever is firmly locked into position and the basket's mounted securely. Starting our controller, we're going to press start to link the controller to the chassis. The reason we do this during the pre-start is to confirm on our chassis that all our clearance flashing LED lights around the machine are operational. And during the startup procedure, we will hear our movement buzzers and alarms working after we start our engine. Following our pre-start, now we're ready to operate for the day. We're going to select our upper control, which is highlighted by our blue square, our blue square represented in our upper platform picture. We're going to release our lower e-stop. We're also going to make sure our battery isolator is turned on and active. We're going to release our e-stop on our upper controller and we're going to wait for the machine's ECU to do its startup process. This startup process, you'll hear some uh, beeps as that computer is initializing. Once these beeps stop, you'll have a code on the screen that says press start. Our start button is located on the left-hand side of our controller, marked start. We press once, this links our controller with our main ECU down the bottom. So now we're ready to start. Of a cold morning, the Yanmar engine does have a glow plug. You would hold down on the engine start switch. That's our glow plug. You can see the little curly symbol there uh, for the glow plugs. Once we've glowed the machine, we're ready. To start driving the machine, we're going to select our lift to drive command switch down to drive. This is now going to activate all our drive related symbols around our joysticks being our drive forward and back on each joystick and our track in and out on each joystick. To obtain the best working diagram of this machine, we recommend that where possible we always start by widening the tracks to their 100% width. You can do so by pulling out on both joysticks. Yeah. 
This now eliminates our slew restriction and our telescopic boom restriction. When we start to drive, the machine's automatically going to lift into transport mode of 15 degrees of the upper boom. So now we're ready to drive. We'll hold forward. You'll see our boom lifts to clear our jib from the ground and we're now ready to start driving. To access our fast drive speed, on the left hand side of our controller we have a button which is pink and marked fast drive. Whilst we're in our transport mode, we we'll click, click and hold that once, you'll then see fast drive in transport come in on the screen, if you can see that in the reflection. Now that fast drive is active, we only need to use our right hand joystick for driving because this is going to be straight line only. Changing from our drive to lift functions, we simply get our command switch from drive to lift and you'll notice on the screen now all our arrows have changed to what motion is available in the booms. So at the moment with the engine running we would be ready for all functions because our track chassis is wide at the moment. If our track chassis was narrow we would simply lose one of our slew options because we obviously couldn't slew to the retracted track. All of our controls now that we're on the blue lift, on our blue lift switch, so all of our controls around our joysticks are marked in the blue and they're going to give us our idea of what we can do. So as an example, we have boom down in blue, we have turret slew to the right, turret slew to the left, boom up in the middle. Over on our other side we have basket rotate to the left, basket rotate to the right, we have telescopic uh, for attract and telescopic out at the top. So there are our main, main functions on our joystick. The only function that is not on our joystick is down to the right, which is our jib up and down. So our jib up and down will always be open. That's not interlocked by our uh, stability diagrams. So now we're ready to lift. We can see in our little stability diagram here. I've manually set this machine out of level so we can see our red dots are indicating that our turret is slightly leaned out of one degree. When I start this machine up we're going to use a lift function. We're then going to notice the machine's going to automatically self-level and we'll begin to lift. Lift. Boom up. After the machine's completed its automatic level, we're going to be lifting. As we're lifting, we're gonna see our working height diagram is going to slowly start increasing. This is telling us our maximum working height and our maximum outreach. So as we get higher and higher, We can see now that I've jibbed out, our maximum outreach has increased. We're not fully maxed out yet, but as we continue to change our position with the machine, and depending on what ground it's on, this is always going to keep modifying its two values, working height and max outreach, as to what we're allowed to do with the machine at that particular time.
in the event of an emergency and your machine's lost power, for example, and you need to get the basket down if there's someone in it, our emergency controls are accessed under this panel. This is our valve assembly for all our manual control of functions in an emergency situation. You'll see marked on our diagram uh, which valve and which correlates to which function. Under our cover, we have our jacking handle. Installed into our pump. And then in our current situation, we know that the upper boom needs to come down. So we're gonna select our, the picture of our upper boom. We know that it's the last valve in the line. So we're going to pull on this valve and we're gonna pump down. Now, in a normal situation, if we were slewed around, we would wanna start the process basically as this picture describes we're going to use our tally first we're going to centralize our basket if we need to re-level our basket if we need to bring our jib in if we need to center our turret slew and then last and most least bring 